the state is already, in fact, one of the leaders in sustainable energy production. We've made, as I, as I pointed out, when we started our journey about six years ago, we only had 45 megawatts of solar energy being produced from our state. But today, I'm delighted to share with you that uh, we are number two in the country with more than 4,100 megawatts of solar energy production in a very, very short span of time. That goes to show you the commitment of our Honorable Chief Minister, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Rao Garu, to renewable energy, to sustainable energy solutions. And uh, we are looking to also, of course, ramp up all possible energy solutions, uh, especially on the sustainable front. Now, when it comes to manufacturing, in fact, I'm delighted today that uh, we have signed about five MOUs, not only with uh, manufacturers, but also some regulatory authorities. Our manufacturing sector today, in fact, in Telangana, is, in spite of the fact that we have, uh, you know, someone like Mahindra manufacturing nearly 150,000 tractors, a large OEM, from, Z from their Zahirabad plant. And I'm delighted, Pawanji, thank you very much if you're listening in, on making the announcement that uh, you're going to bring in the electric tractor with all Japanese technology and it would be manufactured out of Zahirabad. It's a matter of pride that, uh, you know, the largest, um, you know, tractor manufacturing facility in Asia today, which is based in Zahirabad, will also start manufacturing electric tractors. I'm sure the farmers in our country would look forward and will surely lap up the advancements that you guys are making in electric tractors as well. Our policy is comprehensive and therefore today I'm delighted we have Olectra, Maitra, Gaim, and you know, um, other M ETUs and, uh, you know, others who have signed, a, signed ETRIO, I'm sorry, uh, have signed MOUs with us. Our policy does not limit itself, though, to electric vehicle manufacturers only. Our incentives, our policy incentives will also be extended to charging station, uh, you know, uh, uh, charging stations and also battery manufacturers. And I'm delighted that uh, we are receiving several players and several uh, proposals with intent to set up charging stations and also storage solutions. Now, I also wanted to quickly point out two things. Like I said, a cohesive approach between departments, between the various facets of my ministry, that is the industry and commerce, also need to be in place if we have to make a EV policy a truly successful policy. So therefore, let me share with you that uh, in our state today we have the largest electronics manufacturing cluster, if you look at them in a, in a combined uh, way. We have more than 1,000 acres of land available at our disposal. One is E-City in Raviryal and another one in Maheshwaram. Between the two of them, we have 1,000 acres of land at our disposal for electronics manufacturers. Likewise, we also have a huge NIMZ, the National Investment Manufacturing Zone based out of Zahirabad, where I already mentioned that Mahindra's one of the largest OEMs of our country has a significant plant. We would like to promote it as an automobile cluster and ensure that more than 1,000 acres, again, are allotted for any automaker who would want to come into our state and work with us so as to ensure a complete, comprehensive ecosystem of OEM, supply chain, can coexist together in one single location. And also, I'm happy to announce two clusters, two industrial clusters. One in the Chandan Valley Sitarampur cluster in Shabad in Rangaradi district, which is already attracting significant investment and which is uh, where I think uh, both Olectra and Maitra are setting up their plants, will shape up into an EV cluster. And also another very important cluster in Divitipalli in Mahbubnagar will also be developed as another new energy park, new energy and new, uh, you know, um, EV cluster. Likewise, we also plan, in fact, to develop a mobility cluster, which I will be announcing soon, uh, possibly sometime next month. We have, again, a number of very interesting technology players and also auto manufacturers who are coming together for the first time in creating this mobility cluster. So this approach of having an automobile cluster, an electronics cluster, an EV cluster and also a mobility cluster, I think would provide that comprehensive ground for anybody who's interested in electric vehicle space to make Telangana their hub and look nowhere else, no further, uh, you know, for their enterprise and entrepreneurial ideas when it comes to setting up base in India. We will continue, like I said, you know, through TSI Pass and other 
very progressive initiatives under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister to continue to attract manufacturing and also continue to focus on expanding our research ecosystem through a collaborative effort with the private sector and also the wonderful academic institutions we have. Let me also remind you that Hyderabad, in fact, has a significant base of electronics companies in the form of ECIL, and I'm not talking now, I'm talking legacy. ECIL, BEL, in fact, uh, HAL, and all of these companies, all of these large public sector undertakings, uh, you know, which, have, uh, which are, uh, you know, having a significant presence in Hyderabad, have shaped up the ecosystem. And there is a large, small and medium entrepreneurial ecosystem that already exists, which will again propel our drive and our ambition to be the leading EV and leading electrified state in the country, as a leader, in fact. And let me just give you some uh, broad statistics. You know, when um, the world economy and India's economy also, in fact, has not been doing very well for the last uh, more than a few quarters. In fact, I, as you all may remember, even before Corona hit us, I think the last eight quarters preceding, you know, the pandemic, also we have seen slowdown across the country. But fortunately for us in Telangana, our annual GSDP growth rate has been consistent. We've been growing at a breakneck speed, and we've been growing at a much, much rapid pace than any other state in the country at 14.2% over the last five years. We are consistently ranked as among the top three states in the country on the ease of doing business rankings. We have slipped the slot this year, but we'll bounce back, I'm sure. And our TSI pass, which is a landmark single window clearance system, has been instrumental in bringing more than $28 billion of investment in the last five years. Telangana continues to remain number two as a city uh, and state in IT software exports, but our growth rate has been substantially higher than the national growth rate. In fact, while the country has been growing at about 8%, we've been growing at about 18%, which goes to show you that our growth momentum has not slipped. We've also recently added many EV-related technology firms, such as ZF Automotive and Electronics, ZF Automotive, and electronics firms such as Oppo, Vivo, Skyworth, Intel, Micron, all of them today are having significant presence in our city. Our innovation ecosystem is second to none, with important uh, players and important institutions such as RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad, TASK, the Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge, soon to be coming up T-Works, and of course T-Hub, which is widely known. We intend to leverage our strength, strengths in electronics, aerospace and defense, and information technology sectors creating synergies, thereby developing as a center for research and innovation for all electric vehicles, battery technologies, and other emerging technologies such as autonomous and connected vehicles. We have taken a pragmatic approach in drafting this policy. We've consulted the industry. We've also discussed with various other public policy institutions. And I guarantee that if we meet the initial numbers, because there might be a concern that the numbers that we've showcased in this policy are on the lower side in terms of adoption. I promise you one thing, that if we meet the initial numbers, I shall go back to the cabinet and plead with Honorable Chief Minister to further increase the numbers and extend incentives to as many people who adopt uh, to these electric vehicles as possible. As I pointed out, I think the key departments, transport department, of course, plays a very important role in regulatory and adoption of EVs. I request the Honorable Transport Minister and Transport Secretary to work with, work with us closely and let's work together in ensuring that uh, this becomes a success. Energy department also needs to take measures to make charging easily available. I'm glad that uh, they are represented here by Mr. Janaya, who will ensure, but TS Redco will also set up a lot, lot of uh, charging stations. MA and UD, of course, which is also under my supervision, will ensure all regulatory approvals and setting up of necessary infrastructure with respect to our uh, charging stations that we will be setting up in metro stations and elsewhere will also be in parking lots also will be, you know, factored and will be given whatever incentives are required to make it sustainable. We're also, as I pointed out, planning to establish public charging stations at airports, railway stations, metro stations, parking lots, bus depots, markets, fuel stations, malls, etc. And I request all charging station players to come forward and work with us. And we can work with, we're not exclusive to anyone. We will be open. We will op work with, uh, you know, all the leading players in the industry in a very transparent fashion. And we look forward to working closely with you. We are already establishing 
178 charging stations in Telangana. And the state already, as was pointed out by Honorable Transport Minister, has a fleet of buses plying through TSRTC. We are currently engaging with ARAI, with whom we have just signed an MOU, to collectively work towards promoting research and development for manufacturing of electric vehicle and energy storage systems, because looking forward, as was pointed out by Anna Roy, India needs to find its own solutions. We cannot be aping the West. We cannot be aping any other country with respect to EVs, because our situation is very different. Our, you know, our, our, our people are very different. Our approach to our roads, our approach to our urban planning, our approach to adoption of technology is very different when, when compared to other countries and other, other, other parts of the world. We believe that the EV adoption would increase more and more since the policy just rolled out today, as was pointed out again by my previous speakers. While the Government of India may have launched out their idea, their, um, you know, their efforts three years ago, I think it's very, very important for the states to join this to actually you know, uh, gain momentum. And with Telangana now um, you know, coming out with a, its own policy, I believe the adoption would improve and increase at a rapid pace. So we invite the industry in India and abroad to come forward, make Hyderabad as their base for manufacturing operations, as we believe local manufacturing is the key to achieve the price performance parity and enable faster adoption of electric vehicles. Once again, I thank all the stakeholders who have participated in policy making, who have come forward to invest in the state of Telangana, and I look forward to interacting with you more often and more closely to ensure that Telangana truly becomes the hub for electric vehicles in India. Thank you very much.